welcome to the CoinGecko podcast. For today's episode, we have Siddhartha Jain, a co-founder of DeFi Dollar. Siddhartha is the co-founder. Um, uh, Siddhartha takes care of the business and operations bits uh, at DeFi Dollar. He is an on-chain data buff and was previously working on ecosystem development at a layer two scaling project on Ethereum. Welcome to the CoinGecko podcast, Siddhartha. Thank you so much for having me, Bobby. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I mean, just some uh, disclosure, I mean, uh, we, I've, I've invested in uh, DeFi dollar in the seed stage. So happy to, to see where you guys have been going and share the progress that, that you guys at DeFi dollar uh, uh, have, have gone on. Right. So, so I guess, I guess uh, Siddhartha, so let's, let's kind of start things up. Right. So maybe if you can give a simple explanation of what DeFi dollar is and um, what gave you the idea to work on this specific problem set. Sure. Uh, so, so just to get started, right. Uh, Bobby, uh, as you know, DeFi dollar is a stable coin index, uh, which is essentially can be uh, like any of the other indices that uh, people even in the web two world are familiar with, right? Uh, what we're doing is uh, kind of combining all of the major stable coins out there, right? Let's say USDC, USDT, DAI, uh, TUSD, right? And then offering them as a basket offering, right? Uh, essentially what that enables is people uh, don't have risk exposure to just one stable coin. And in case of a black swan event, right, uh, all of their holdings or hundred percent of their holdings will not be at risk. And uh, just because how the index is structured in multiple uh, allocations of each asset, uh, their exposure only gets limited to, uh, let's say that particular percentage uh, of the affected stable coin, right? So in a sense, uh, the idea was to create a sort of risk hedging mechanism, right? Uh, to make a more stable uh, stable coin out there. Uh, just because there's so much innovation going on in the stable coin space, right? I think we'll cover that later as well. Uh, but a new user gets really confused, right? When he just stumbles upon stable coins, right? Like which one should I hold or which one should I not hold or what are the various things that a particular stable coin can provide access to, right? So for us, it was to democratize access for users who are new to crypto and are just discovering crypto to hold an index of stable coins instead of going ahead and purchasing uh, whatever stable coin was probably there on the platform of choice. So, so just to dive a little bit deeper. So DeFi dollar uh, basically has four different stable coins, USDT, USDC, DAI and TUSD. And uh, if I remember correctly or correct me if I'm wrong, they're all split equally 25% each. So, uh, a uh, couple of things here, right? But we saw the thing uh, with us is we are b built on top of curve at the moment, right? So we're using curve at LP tokens to back uh, DeFi dollar, right? Uh, when we launched, right? I think if you'll remember, we launched with the SUSD pool on curve, right? So the co composition of the index back then also had SUSD in that. Uh, but right now what we've done, I, I think we've removed uh, the SUSD pool and we've added support for the Y pool on curve. Right. So that has added support for uh, TUSD instead of SUSD. Right. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the whole design mechanism, right. Or the modular structure of DeFi dollar allows us to plug in all of these liquidity pools, right. Which we call peaks uh, into the protocol. Right. And uh, in turn, as, as we keep on adding more peaks, we keep on giving more and more choice for our users, right. To diversify their portfolio. Now, coming back to the question where you said all four of them are uh, at a particular percentage, the answer to that is no. Currently, the weights are decided by the percentage allocations in the Y pool on curve, right? So slowly and steadily, as we keep on adding more pools, right? We just uh, had a vote conclude with the curve team, right? Uh, to add a S Aave pool, which will provide support to SUSD and DAI. Right. So this is one of our initiatives to actually ensure that the index is balanced in terms of more exposure to uh, some of the uh, slightly more decentralized avenues and stable coins. Right. Uh, in case the community really wants to shift away, right, because there's a lot of FUD happening with Tether and USDC, right, sometimes. So probably the community has that option in case they want a larger percentage of the index can be denoted in uh, decentralized or let's say less custodial stable coins mm -hmm. instead of the major ones. Right. So, uh, gradually there, it totally depends on what the community wants, right. They can also vote to increase for some of the more stabilized ones. Uh, but they can also choose, right. There's an option, uh, that they can vote to make it more decentralized or more resistant to censorship or uh, okay. these shocks that are there in the market. 
All right, let's, let's, let's go into those things a little bit more later on. But I think for a start now, uh, some pretty much early high level stuff. So, um, so I know there's two tokens in your project. There's a DeFi dollar DAO token, DFD, and there's a DeFi dollar DUSD token, which is a, a basket of stable coins, right? So maybe you can explain to us a little bit more about the differences between the DFD and the DUSD token. Sure. So DUSD, as we discussed, right? Uh, DUSD stands for DeFi dollar. Uh, it's our stablecoin index, right? And it's the core product, right? Uh, everything in the DeFi dollar ecosystem is intended to revolve around the stablecoin index, right? Which as we discussed is currently supported by four stablecoins, but in the future, uh, there can be more stablecoins which can be added, right? Let, let them be algorithmic, let them be uh, crypto backed, fiat backed, right? The intent is to ensure that people can just hold a diversified basket and not worry about uh, the underlying price stability because that is care, taken care of by the protocol, right? So now how DFD comes into the picture is DFD is our governance token uh, for governing things and making decisions on anything related to the protocol, right? So let's say uh, if we decide to add another peak to the protocol, right? Or a liquidity pool, let's say from compound or even on curve, so the users of the protocol will decide, okay, whether they want additional exposure to some of these assets, or let's say uh, some of these stable coins becomes really huge, right? One algorithmic stable coin comes in and then people really want, uh, let's say it can be anything, right? Some of the experiments which are ongoing or any new ones. Uh, so people can actually say, okay, we would probably want more exposure to a particular stable coin, right? It, it can be algorithmic or any sort of uh, stable coin in nature, right? We don't discriminate against that. The only thing is we're not, added a lot of algorithmic stablecoin support because we see that uh, as still a very experimental sort of avenue, right? And we've not seen a clear uh, pattern emerge or uh, one of these coins holding the peg, right? Because for us holding the peg and reducing volatility and the holding risk is most important, right? So DFD will be used for all these protocol governance decisions and also for uh, some of the incentives that we give out, right? Uh, to promote the adoption of DUSD, right? Because it's it's going to be a uh, incentivization problem to start with, uh, to ensure that more and more people uh, kind of come and use. Obviously, it is very tightly coupled with the utility bit, right? Which I will be really happy to share more light on as to how we're trying to make uh, DUSD very closely uh, and tightly integrated with the DeFi community, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that... I think you can think of it uh, somewhat similar to how Maker and Dai operate, right? So mm -hmm. Dai is the stable coin. Uh, for us, DUSD is, is the stable coin, and Maker uh, is the foundation and uh, is the backstop for Dai. For, uh, for us, in a similar way, uh, DFD is the uh, sort of backup and uh, going to be the underlying asset that will be uh, used in case of a, a Black Swan event, right? To uh, get DUSD back to its peg, right? Mm -hmm. But that is the worst case scenario. There are other mechanisms that are in place to ensure that DUSD holds the peg. But yeah, the fallback option is uh, is on DFD. Do, do, you, do you see the stablecoin space as a very competitive space? I mean, I mean, there are custodial stablecoins like USDT, USDC, and then we have the over collateralized stablecoins like DAI. You have the zero collateral algorithmic stablecoins like Basis Cash, ESD, mm -hmm. DSD. And you have the fractional algorithmic stable coins like Frax. And then, and then you have the stable coin baskets like DUSD and MMUSD, M stables USD, right? So like, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on competing in this very crowded stable coin space? And, and I just want to get a, your, 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 a few, your point of view on where, how do you see this stable coin space evolving in the, in the near term as, or near and, and mid, near mid and longer term, I suppose? I, I think that's a brilliant question, right? But that, that's something that we uh, debated a lot on before starting the project, right? So we didn't want to make a new stable coin out there, right? Uh, we know for a fact that uh, issuing a stable coin is getting easier and easier, right? It's very easy for uh, people to just issue their own stable coins, right? Depending on how they want to back it, right? Fiat bag or crypto bag or uh, even algorithmic, right? And we've seen a lot of experimentation uh, in the field as well, right? I think the current market cap, I, I was just checking CoinGecko earlier, right, today. And uh, the stablecoin market cap is around like $55 billion at the moment, right? Out of which probably Tether has like 30, $37 uh, billion, right? So uh, again, right, we're very, very early in the stablecoin adoption phase, right? And uh, there's just one guy who's taking like 60 to 70% uh, of the whole market capitalization, right? And 
and it's been the most dominant force for a long time. So we don't see all of these stable coins as competitors. Uh, we see uh, them as tools to actually grow the pie, right? When I say grow the pie, I think it's more about ensuring that uh, general people uh, get onboarded to crypto and use uh, some form of cryptocurrency uh, as stable coins to do uh, transactions, let it be uh, retail transactions or settlements or cross-border payments or anything, right? So once we have a lot of these uh, coins, uh, mostly getting into the hands of the usual retail crowd, right? I think then we will see the actual potential of cryptocurrencies unleashed, right? No one wants to really sell or transact in their ether or uh, Bitcoin, right? I think until and unless it's going to be if you're going to buy something like a crypto punk, right? Which again is going to be speculative in nature and you're expecting it to uh, go higher and higher. Uh, but the point here is, yeah, to actually enab enable retail commerce uh, with obviously scaling coming in and everything, I think uh, all of the network effects of everything that is getting built in DeFi coupled with the layer two scaling uh, benefits that get unleashed. I think we will definitely see a huge, huge spike uh, in not just the number of stable coins, but the overall volume that will accompany them as well. Right. So we want to position ourselves uh, very carefully out there. Right. We're not uh, we're not saying we're creating a new stable coin. Right. Probably we will experiment with something uh, in, in the algorithmic space. But yeah, that's majorly for academic purposes uh, than, let's say, uh, getting it out. But yeah, depends on how those experiments go, right? Yeah. Uh, the core offering is the stablecoin index, which essentially uh, benefits uh, more and more as uh, a lot of these competitors, right, emerge. Because these are not competitors, they're partners, right? They get integrated into the index, right? So currently, we're just integrating four of them. But as the protocol matures, as we get more stable, as we get more battle tested on mainnet, right? We've been live uh, since August of last year, right? Late, late August. And since then we've achieved like volumes of uh, like around the highest was around $17 million. Currently we are around 14, uh, which are like very early numbers, right? We're still trying to uh, listen to the community and come up with features that probably they would want in the stablecoin index, right? And also coming up with utilities on the side to ensure that uh, holding DOSD has some form of benefit for the community, right? And to keep on integrating because integrations are something which can become a chicken and egg problem, right? Until unless you've got volume or a lot of circulating supply, people don't want to integrate, right? And that's sort of a hindrance in getting adopted in the first place, right? So. The, the point is we, we know uh, that the stablecoin space is very rife for innovation, right? You see products like Rai, uh, you've yeah. seen the whole ESD, DSD, uh, algorithmic stablecoin uh, play out, right? We feel uh, that these were just early attempts and there are more sophisticated and more uh, mature attempts, even uh, either building on top of these protocols or uh, even apart from them, right? We will see a lot more innovation coming around uh, in 2021. Right. And uh, we just want to be prepared for that. We've designed DeFi dollar in that way that the structure is very modular and uh, we could plug into any liquidity pool. Right. I don't know if you remember when Swerve got launched, right. Mm. The fork of curve, we could deploy a uh, instance uh, on top of that within like two to three hours. Right. Uh, just because we wanted to experiment where DeFi degens at heart, right. Like we really like to participate in the community effort. So the whole point is that we are very open to seeing where the space goes. We don't want to get constrained by uh, whatever limitations are there at this moment, right? Yep. And uh, that is how we've designed uh, the index for ourselves as well, right? It has a lot of ways in which we can uh, plug into different uh, liquidity pools and uh, enabling it via governance has been our uh, way, right? Of ensuring that uh, we listen to the community and not just have a top-down approach, right? We have discussions with the community in our Discord uh, one of these discussions led to this fact, right? People are really scared about USDT and if we could uh, increase the percentage points allocated or just increase the exposure of uh, decentralized or less custodial stable coins in the index. So, so what would, who, 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 who would want to hold the USD and where can you, what's the, you, you talk a lot about uh, utility, right? Just now. So what would be the utility of the USD except for someone who wants to have stable coin exposure, but don't want exposure to only one stable coin sort of want to right. diversify right. their, so, their risk. I think a very nuanced uh, person right now, right? Like the profile is someone who's not a degen, who's not looking for, let's say 300, 400% APY, right? Uh, but it's sitting on a huge 
uh, pile of money, right? Probably and uh, is looking for a way to earn a stable yield on top of that, right? For example, we've got the DUSD savings account, uh, which has around $5 million currently in it, right? And offers around 30% APY, right? And uh, this, this interest is coming from the protocol earnings, right? Because we deposit our uh, funds into Curve and then the resulting LP token is deposited into the Yearn Finance vaults, right? So the protocol is generating interest, not just from the Yearn Finance interest, but also from the trading fees on Curve along with the CRV rewards of which are getting farmed, right? So this is just one side of it. As in when we integrate more pools or uh, the way that the protocol generates income will also become wider, right? And we're also going ahead with a lot of integrations uh, in, in the space, right? Which are not limited to stable coins again. So uh, DeFi dollar is not just about stable coins. We're working currently uh, with Badger DAO, right? To create a BDC index uh, as well, right? Uh, I'll probably share more about that later, but uh, we kind of consider ourselves as not just a stable coin team, but uh, more of a stability labs incorporated, right? Where we tinker with, let's say indexes or new approaches or, or new utilities that can be created around stable coin, mm -hmm. right? So for, for now, uh, the users, are people who are aware of the risks that can be there in the market uh, when let's say a decentralized stablecoin loses its peg or uh, probably let's say for algorithmic stablecoin does not return back to its peg or if there is a bank run on some of these uh, fiat backed stablecoins, right? Obviously the system needs to mature a lot more to actually uh, be able to withstand these ma major shocks, right? So uh, if there's a black swan even, it will be even tough for us right now to return to the peg, but a uh, short, duration impacts, right? Like volatility and uh, decentralized stable coins or even in uh, the centralized ones. That is something that we are building uh, to handle right now. So the ideal customer would be someone who wants to de-risk uh, their portfolio, number one, and people who are looking to earn, uh, let's say stable yields, right? It can be something like, uh, we've not talked about it, but something that the CoinGecko fund, right? I think if you have uh, funds set aside, they can be deposited to get a uh, a particular interest rate, like like a floating one or a fixed one. Uh, currently, we don't have fixed, but it's just uh, relying on the market. But yeah, around 30% APY on your stablecoin holdings, right? Without any impermanent loss, right? So for, for DeFi DGENs, that's particularly like, let's say not that exciting, but uh, what we're doing is we're focusing on geographies where uh, people don't really have access to these innovative financial products, right? And probably are even getting negative interest rates in their central banks. Uh, so, so the key thing is to make sure that uh, they're the ones who adopt it first. They're the ones who use it for uh, settlements and then slowly uh, keep on increasing its utility in the CFI, DeFi uh, conjunction, right? Where both of these things meet. And also initially the goal is to take a, take a more of a die sort of an approach, right? And be very tightly coupled with all of the DeFi applications and ensure that the token has a very high, DUSD has like high velocity. It's getting used a lot, recycled mm -hmm. a lot, or being deployed a lot, uh, and not just being stashed, right? Yep. So the goal is to ensure uh, key, creating that utility, right? We're, we're, we're still very early, right, in terms of volume. So most of these approaches can be experimental, but that's our strength, right? To innovate and see uh, yep. what is something that our uh, customers would want. And, and, and how would you say that uh, DUSD and how would it stack up against uh, M Stables USD, the MUSD? I mean, from a broad level, it almost sounds very similar, but I'm sure you know the differences and you can share with some of the listeners here what would be the main difference between DUSD and MUSD. No, I think, I, I think uh, again, right, all due credit to uh, M Stable team, right? I think they were the first ones uh, to come into the space, right, and uh, start an experiment. Uh, but that being said, right, I think our approaches are a little bit different, uh, fundamentally different, different, right? In the sense, they consider uh, the peg to be one is to one, right? If yep. I'm not wrong, <laughs> and uh, they 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 built in the swapping mechanism themselves, right? So for us, that was a critical question, right? When we were doing the protocol design, our first our V1, right, that we developed uh, for the ETH uh, hackathon, right? I think it was based on Balancer and Aave, right? Uh, and we were doing uh, some sort of swaps as well in, in order to uh, keep the peg uh, or, or issue the stable coin, right? But then Curve came along, right? And it's just about recognizing uh, the potential of uh, upcoming technology, right? And uh, what Legos are already there so that you can build faster and more efficiently, right? So for us, Curve has been uh, brilliant in that sense, right? 
So we started out building on top of Curve just because of that. And we have backed DeFi dollar first uh, peaks, right? Or liquidity pools by Curve pools because the swapping mechanism is taken care of, right? And when that is done, we can focus on the remaining two things which really matter to the community, which is uh, stability uh, against uh, and uh, resistance against volatility and also coming up with novel ways to ensure that there is uh, some particular yield, right? A protocol income that can be shared with the users, right? So we're trying to strike a fine balance between uh, the income that they can get or, and also the stability of the whole protocol, right? Mm -hmm. Mstable is also doing, I, I think those guys are doing brilliant work uh, and they they also have plans for a BT. They I think the BTC index is live as well. Yeah, but yeah, yeah BTC. Uh, we're taking live. a different approach there as well. Uh, we've collaborated with Badger uh, because mm -hmm. most of the BTC liquidity on chain uh, on Ethereum uh, is captured by uh, Badger's set vaults, right? Yep. And uh, we we reached out to the team, right, Arpit, and uh, they've had uh, we've had brilliant conversations, and uh, the product is almost live. I think this is sort of a teaser. We will be uh, releasing something uh, very soon uh, this week. So oh, okay. uh, stay, stay tuned for that. It's, it's going to be huge, right? I think there's uh, more than $200 million worth of Bitcoin uh, volume in uh, sets, right? Uh, on Badger sets. I, I think I'm probably uh, lowballing the figure. But yeah, uh, there is a lot of scope for that volume to come over uh, via DeFi dollar into an interest bearing index, right? Uh, mm. BTC index. So these are some, again, some of the innovative products, right? That we're trying to do. We try to take a more holistic approach and uh, work with, let's say, uh, partners, right? Who are doing things and we can help them take it a notch above, right? Not, mm -hmm. not saying that others are not doing it. It's just that we're very proactive in doing it. Uh, we have another product that is uh, undergoing, uh, op uh, is currently undergoing, uh, is building, right? Which is the option coin. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of done that in conjunction uh, with the open team, right? Yep. Uh, it built uh, on the open options protocol. Uh, we'll be using that. Uh, at the end, obviously, it's going to be uh, protocol agnostic, right? And uh, we deem any uh, options protocol to come in and kind of issue the option coin. I'll just explain option coins in a very Yeah, simple. yeah, please do. I mean, uh, like, I think I remember reading this briefly, but like, yeah, please, please share what is this uh, option coins with us. Yeah, so the option coin is, uh, so just you know, kind, kind of imagine, right? Uh, kind of imagine uh, maker DAO's die, right? So you have around 200, 150% collateralization is needed or you get liquidated, right? And to uh, keep that safe, people usually collateralize it with 250%, 300%, right? So there's a little bit of a capital efficiency issue there, right? Uh, people don't get uh, the maximum out of their assets uh, that they could have deployed elsewhere, right? So uh, again, right, an experiment that we've had in our heads is to unlock the potential of assets uh, by coupling them with the options protocol, right, which are coming up on Ethereum, right? So for us, the belief was that options are at a place where AMMs were like probably a year, in a year and a half ago, right? And probably a year hence, we will see a lot of on-chain volume on, on options and probably even AMMs built around that, right? To uh, enable smooth liquidity flow, right? So the key thing that we're doing here is we're taking a put option. Let's say ETH is trading at uh, around 1700, right? So you take a put uh, at a price of let's say 1600 and you combine it with the underlying asset, right? Let's say ETH. Uh, so now you've got a put option for ETH at 1600 and uh, ETH is collateral at 1600, right? And you fuse the two, right? So essentially the synthetic product here that you've created now has a price floor, right? Uh, whatever the price of ETH, if you've got a put option, now that underlying asset will always, you can get it back, you can get traded back for $1,600, right? Because that's the price floor, right? So that can unleash a lot of new use cases or integrations with protocols uh, where uh, they need risk to be very clearly defined, right? So one thing that I said, right? Like I gave you the maker example as well. So when this price floor is determined, even we can accept that option coin as a form of collateral in DeFi dollar and issue a uh, DUSD against it, right? So it just helps unlock uh, more capital efficient, uh, your capital that can be deployed elsewhere. And also I, I think currently the issues that might be there are probably around liquidity, right? Like the options protocols are not, not liquid. But I think uh, that is something that will gradually get solved. There's a lot of 
action or there's a lot of development that's happening on options protocols right now. Uh, and that, that being said, uh, the key thing, right? Let's say with some uh, fenced protocols or governed protocols is uh, to get assets whitelisted. I think it sometimes takes time, right? I think once you have an option issued, right? Then it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can probably, uh, even with low liquidity, if someone is willing to buy that put option, right? You can still have uh, that option coin issued and uh, have, uh, let's say a price floor for an asset that can be leveraged further uh, yeah. for uh, pur other purposes, right? Whatever you want to do on chain. So uh, basically opening up the market a lot more for uh, assets with lower liquidity, uh, but let's say higher speculation probably, right? In that case, if just people are willing to bet on taking the other side of the trade. So that is something that we are working on. So a lot of innovative use cases, right? I think we started with how we're different. But yeah, I think instead of how we're different, we've covered what uh, we're trying to do differently because inherently the products are the same. I think uh, they're trying to create a stablecoin index. The index composition obviously is very different and you can track it uh, on uh, by comparing on both of our websites, right? As to what, it, what are the coins supported. With our mechanism, I think we've been uh, able to better handle uh, the composition in decentralized stablecoins, right? In yeah. our index. But yeah, people can observe that themselves. Uh, but we are very respectful of the M stable team, right? And yep. uh, we we sort of see them as uh, partners and collaborators, mm -hmm. right? In order to diversify the meta stablecoin space as well, right? Because education is really important. First of all, we have to broaden the pie or uh, to make people understand why a meta stablecoin is needed in the first place, right? And then education is something that we can do always better in collaboration. So so I guess this is a question that you get asked a lot, right? So when life or these products, right? So, so you, you mentioned that you have this uh, product with BadgerDAO, uh, I suppose it's coming out sometime this week and then the option, option coins protocol, like uh, when is it coming live? And then have any other new products that you guys are planning that you haven't already mentioned yet? And when, when is it coming live? I suppose. So I think, I think just to manage the expectation, <laughs> I think we've sort of faced this uh, in the past. Uh, we, we tend to under promise and over deliver, right? So we're releasing much uh, uh, more in-depth coverage of the interest bearing BTC this week. The protocol, uh, is the, the product is supposed to go live this month. I, I think it should be by mid uh, or probably by the third week. Right. Uh, but again, right. Don't, don't <laughs> get back to me on that. But yeah. The option coin might have to wait, but we might have a testnet version probably later this month, but yeah, uh, no, uh, it can get delayed, right? Because currently yeah, the course. focus is uh, totally on uh, the uh, IBBTC index with Badger and obviously some of the other core protocol things, right? Where we're handling the stability module as well. So a lot of these things are uh, going out of way. There are some experiments that we're doing as well, which probably I'll not like to uh, mm -hmm. disclose right now, of but course. yeah, <laughs> probably uh, in, in some time in our next podcast, right? If it okay. happens, I think we can shed more light there. Yeah. So, so, I mean, recently, right. I mean, we start seeing Binance smart chain, uh, gaining a lot of traction, a lot of projects on Ethereum has sort of moved, have created a version on BSC as well, uh, because of their high gas fees. And it seems that a lot of like retail guys who don't want to pay 30, $50 for gas on Ethereum has kind of moved on to BSC. Yeah. I'm just curious, right. Are you guys also thinking of what are your thoughts on BSV, BSC? And are you guys also thinking of building on top of BSC or that's not something part of the consideration at all? So uh, I'm a retail guy. <laughs> I, I can't spend $50 on gas, right? And I really feel the pain of some of our users, right? I've got so many messages coming from our users who are like, uh, I want to mint DUSD or I, I want to participate in some of these liquidity pools, right? But the gas amount is very high, right? Like uh, for a $100, $200 transaction, they cannot just afford to pay like 30% uh, of it uh, as yep. gas fees, right? Which is, uh, I'm lowballing that number, but again, that's the reality, right? And the thing is, uh, we, we are hardcore Ethereum buffs, right? Like we totally believe in the ideals of decentralization and how things should be, right? And that is the vision that we are aligned on. But the thing uh, right now is Ethereum at some, some stages, right? Has become unusable, right? When I say unusable, when you price out the retail guys, right? Who are actually the majority, of who uh, will, we keep on talking about mass adoption, right? Mass adoption. There's no mass adoption without retail, right? There's no mass adoption without people being able to make transactions without spending uh, a 
let's say more than uh, two to three percent of the whole transaction amount on gas fees, right? That's just unsustainable, not just for retail, but also from some of the more, let's say, medium to uh, not, not with obviously whales, but medium sort of traders or operators, right? That being said, I think I think it's really uh, exciting to see how the BSC ecosystem has uh, flourished, right? Because uh, you you could see a lot of other attempts, right? Other elements which have been there for a far uh, longer time, right? But have not got some sort of uh, reception like BSC has got, right? Yep. Like we we have explored internally as to what we could do on BSC. Uh, if, if there was a curve deployment, we could probably do something very quickly, but we are evaluating this space very in close uh, proximity with other projects, talking to uh, the BSC team as well, right? And trying to figure out what can be a good way, right? Because for us, at the end of the day, I, I think what matters more uh, is what our customers want, right? And our customers really just want to use the protocol right now, okay? And uh, whether uh, they're able to do that. And if it depends on our ability to give them an option to build on BSC, that can definitely be a consideration, right? And uh, we are actively exploring that. I think more details can be awaited on that. But that being said, again, right? Like Ethereum is how it has started yep. and probably with layer two and other solutions, right? I think uh, Matic has been doing uh, really well. Uh, there have been yep. uh, optimism uh, getting released. There has been news of optimism coming along soon, right? So there will be a lot of options for people to choose from, but I think over time, yes, uh, there, if there is a lot of congestion still and it is unsustainable, I think definitely it makes sense uh, for more protocols to explore, right? Yeah. And uh, it can be secondary deployments, right? I think it just adds, so people can just fork, right? That's the beauty of open source. People can just fork and deploy. But I think the confidence that I'm currently getting from the ecosystem is, let's say teams like one inch, right? the protocol themselves have gone on to deploy on top of BSC, right? And which has led to value accrual for the community, utility for the whole ecosystem, right? So that's something uh, that I don't want to rule out. I really think that, that it's a wonderful experiment and has a lot of potential, right? And uh, I'm, I'm just like really open-minded about this and uh, we can definitely, we're, we're uh, actually sort of exploring, right? How that can be made possible yep. and probably you will hear uh, a lot more about this going forward from us. What about layer two? You mentioned a little bit about Matic and Optimism. I, I'm supposed like as a as a DeFi project on Ethereum right now, like you guys must be must be cracking your head on which layer two product, which layer two solution to kind of go forward with because there's so many, it's such a fragmented market right now and there's no clear winner for layer two solutions. So how are you guys thinking about this? And uh, have, have you decided on what any layer two solutions yet or still kind of in the deliberation phase? The short answer, no, we have not zeroed in on any protocol, right? Uh, we would we would probably love to use Matic uh, Polygon, right? Like just because we've helped build it yep. and uh, get it where it is. But at this moment, I think uh, we are, so we are a highly composable product, right? Uh, j just to understand, right? What would be needed for something like a uh, DeFi dollar to exist on any layer two or uh, L1, I think. Uh, we need, first of all, an AMM of which handles liquidity so well, like Curve, right? Mm. Then to generate yields, we will be needing something like uh, Yearn Finance, right? Which handles, uh, which curates or crowdsources all of this liquidity and manages it in one single pool, right? And then there are so many other things, right? Like Curver Protocol on which our uh, users get insurance, right? Uh, so that uh, in case there's a hack, they don't lose any money, right? Uh, when we started off, we were using the Chainlink Oracle as well, right? So that's something that's obviously there in most of these places. But there's a complex uh, uh, sort of this composability tree, right? Uh, that's needed. Right now, we don't see anywhere where everything that we needed uh, for our deployment of DeFi dollar is already there. But I think these uh, these things are getting resolved slowly. So we're, we're just keeping a very open eye, right? And speaking to uh, these teams to ensure that we know, right? Because again, right, these are major protocols that we have leveraged and instead of reinventing, there, there can be people who just go and let, let's say fork curve or yearn and deploy, right? But again, right, there's no guarantee of uh, whether the code will be maintained or uh, whether uh, the delivery will be as high quality as by the original team, right? So the intent here is to wait for people uh, to actually go and uh, kind of converge, right? Because scalability is right now not a tech problem so much as it is a social problem, right? There's a lot of signaling going on as to which 
uh, protocol should more people adopt, right? And the more composable, uh, the more projects that get onboarded, the more composable the solution becomes, right? And that will allow a lot of other teams like us as well, right? Which are uh, just built on the cutting edge of DeFi, right? Like highly composable on top of protocols, then it will be an easier decision for us to make. But right now, I think the core goal is uh, to first, le let's see how things unfold. Mm -hmm. And as and when there is enough support, right, for these protocols, we would love to uh, deploy, right, and just make sure that our users are not uh, facing these troubles anymore and can rebalance their portfolios or probably just come in and out of the liquidity pools without spending like $200 yep. in gas. And I I've even tried to help out our community by telling or sharing them uh, time slots, right? Okay, that you do this transaction <laughs> this time and this time, and probably you will not have to pay that much gas, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's a real problem, and we just want to see it solved as well, right? As yep. along with everyone else in the ecosystem. So you guys are based in India, right? So I'm just curious to hear um, what's kind of the outlook for crypto in India right now. There's a lot of news, I'm not so sure, real or fake, about the Indian government banning crypto. Maybe you can share some light on this for us. Huh? So I think Bobby, the thing was, there was a ban, right? So when I say ban, uh, it was more of central bank uh, mandated, right? Like no banks can actually, uh, let's say, work together with uh, crypto exchanges uh, for banking uh, reasons, right? Like uh, they can't support bank accounts for crypto exchanges, right? So that was the ban that was there a couple of years ago, but which was overturned early last year, right? So since then, there has not been a ban. So crypto, uh, people are freely trading crypto in India. And uh, it, it is not legal tender, as in you cannot no pay course. people with it. Uh, but again, right, there's no restriction on holding, trading, or even let's say development, right? Like development is not at all uh, something that is outlawed. Uh, the whole thing with the government, right? I think you need to understand their perspective as well. I've been speaking to a lot of these regulators and policy makers, right? The thing is uh, that the government is sometimes uh, pro blockchain in the sense pro distributed ledger technology, right? But they also need to understand that uh, cryptocurrencies, right? Are the building block for fundamentally open networks to sustain, right? And incentivize and grow, right? So currently uh, they're just trying to figure out, okay, uh, to protect people against these volatile price swings and just to make sure that the retail guys don't really uh, get taken advantage of, right? I think uh, the regulation has to be made in a way uh, that accommodates for all sides, right? Like entrepreneurs, businesses, the government and every other stakeholder, right? Because uh, people uh, are really, really strongly believing in the potential of crypto, right? There are a ton of developers. I, I think if you just go to Devfolio, right? They've got so many developers coming up in all of these hackathons, right? And building beautiful products I'm just exploring uh, the power of Ethereum and uh, sometimes I would even say other, other blockchains, right? Uh, so there's a huge, huge, huge talent pool, right? Which is yep. waiting to uh, just explode onto the scene, right? I think in, in probably the last year, even you would have seen a lot of Indian projects come to the forefront, right? There have been some which, is, which have been there for quite a long while. Let's say Instadap, Matic, Polygon. Uh, and the like, right? Like now you see more of more, more and more of them coming up, right? Either fundraising or building products. Uh, not a lot of them are live on mainnet, but yeah, I, I think slowly and steadily uh, people are getting there and the ecosystem is maturing. The thing is, yeah, uh, right now you're seeing the second generation, right? Or probably generation 2.5 of startups coming out from India. Yeah. As in when uh, this matures, right? And we're also helping a lot of teams a bootstrap, right? Or advising them on the best practices. We were really lucky, right? To get uh, help from people like you in the industry, right? And also, let's say, uh, Calvin and George from Balancer and Compound respectively, right? Early on uh, when we were starting out. So uh, it's the same thing that we're trying to give back to the Indian community builders right now. And the only thing I can tell you, right? Like if people are not paying attention to India right now, I think it's a big mistake, right? Either for people in venture or even in products, because the sheer pace of innovation is really, really striking, right? And we have a ear to the ground in India and just like, uh, there were like seven to eight firms, right? In Bangalore, where we are based out of in India. Now I know uh, around 10 to 15, just in the same area that we are based in, right? 
and uh, just because of covid we've not been able to do any meetups or attend any of them but i think once a little bit of these uh rules are relaxed i think there are going to be uh, in person discussions which will even hasten the development right yep and just increase the pace of innovation yeah. so again right bottom line crypto is not banned there are laws that the government is uh, mulling over and rightly so but i think uh, there will be adequate uh, discussions with the crypto community right? or the entrepreneurs and other businesses and everyone Uh, before it comes out, if it is not the case, then I think it will be a bad blow to the ecosystem. But I think for now, the entrepreneurs are just focused on how to uh, keep building, right? Even despite of that, because holding a uh, currency is a different thing, and building an open, yes. uh, permissionless system, right, is a different deal altogether, right? And we're focused on the latter. We're more focused on the development bits than on the bits that the government is concerned about. Right? Yeah, it makes sense. So, yeah. right? I mean, I think, if you think about it, like India has like. a billion people around and i mean like it's kind of like it has so many uh computer scientists and and software engineers uh in india and some of the indian developers are the best in the world so yeah i'm not surprised that i mean the indian developers are not thinking about building in the crypto space um but well, they are they so many of so many of them are right and i think just this week our honorable finance minister also commented right that there will be a strategy for crypto in place which will be thought over right so yeah. no outright ban uh, they want to see how innovation can be sustained right yeah. but in a regulated way right of course so we don't blame them for that right obviously the government has to protect uh the uh, citizens from any sort of harm that they think right but i think education is the only way that we can get all of these stakeholders on the same page and then probably yeah. uh, hope for a lot more nuanced discussions right i think Uh, Balaji has uh, yeah, he's been so long in tweets, right? So much yeah. talk about like uh, high-level policy stuff. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. So we need more and more people to vouch for that, right? I don't know, right? So you guys can can come up on an India report, right? I <laughs> I would be happy to help you guys, right? There there needs to be education, and there needs to be a lot more people uh, not believing in this FUD, right? That India. Yeah. is going to ban and all that there are news that comes in but it's always good to get it vetted by someone in the community yeah. uh, before uh, sort of propagating some things like this how big is the retail crypto market in india these days are the young people in india like for example more interested in trading crypto compared to the stock market for example or or they more like traditionally minded or they not even invested in in any any form at all right i i suppose that's kind of the majority of people but I'd like to hear your thoughts so i i can be a little bit uh biased in this right because most of my friend circle or most of my uh frequent contacts are in the crypto space okay right? yeah fair point but i do have a lot of uh these let's say even top b school people right or top tech school people who are aware but are very much not comfortable working in the space right like that that is one problem that we face ourselves as well right because of yeah. these fud and sort of unclear regulations people are not very willing to go ahead and actually let's say take a bet on something as experimental so there is one experiment level which is startups and then there becomes another experiment level where it's crypto startups right so added risk so people yeah. <laughs> uh, get a little bit shy from that but i think yeah again right so just just creating education around that is something that we feel uh, will ensure uh that gets more people in right because uh, i'd be lying to you right if i say that not a lot of people that i know came into crypto when they started trading right so that is the gateway right once they do that then uh, look, so they are not in it for the tech right i think that meme is very popular but yeah it happens the route is via the price action and then people come back and uh, they see right that such products are getting developed or there is so much potential the research that they do for investing kind of leads them here right like oh my god what is this uh, they go down the rabbit hole and then they're very intent on building right i get messages every day from the community right like web 2.0 developers uh, so that is something yep. uh, that that can be improved but uh, awareness wise i think even if you go right even the elderly to a particular limit have have awareness and some of the more savvy ones have invested as well right so indian investors are very shrewd right they will not let go of any opportunity so the market, the retail market is very diverse right india being a diverse country i think it's very much different to the market anywhere else 
in the world, right? So I, I definitely feel there's a lot of scope and you, you can just see at these sort of mergers and acquisitions and sort of investment activity that has been happening in Indian exchanges, right? For example, Coin DCX, Delta, uh, Wazirx, everyone knows got uh, sort of uh, uh, into an MA with Binance, right? So people, people are really aware uh, of uh, people from outside of India are really aware, I would say, but yeah, even Indian users, I've spoken to a lot of the exchanges and uh, the number of users which have been coming in uh, has just been breaking records, right? So a lot more uh, awareness has has been created in the market. Cool, man. So so yeah, I guess I guess I'm kind of ask all my questions here for now, uh, for today. So I guess the last question, um, where do you see DeFi dollar the next few years and where's kind of the best place for someone to follow and stay up to date with DeFi dollar? <laughs> I think, uh, so answering the second question first, right? I think to stay updated with anything DeFi dollar, uh, please follow us on uh, our Twitter. It's simple DeFi dollar. And we keep on posting updates and even sneak peeks are things that we're building. <laughs> uh, and also come and join our Discord or Telegram, right? Whatever is more comfortable for you uh, to stay updated. And with respect to where we see, I think, I think that's something very uh, beautiful, right? And the nature of how highly experimental things are in DeFi and especially with stable coins, right? I think you used to have uh, like one variant of uh, algorithmic stable coin, right? And now there are more than probably I can count like six, seven of them. Yeah, so many. More, <laughs> more in development. So for us, I think uh, what is important is to stay uh, along, right? Just, just not get left behind. Uh, and stick to a singular approach, right? And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, the IBBTC with Badger and the Option Coin with Open, right? These are some of the things that are there. We're looking at some of the other uh, places where we could add value, right? Like by tranching or using some of these other uh, protocols on chain on Ethereum. But yeah, I think probably looking at the future, we can look at a multi-chain sort of a presence. Uh, not guaranteed, but I think let's uh, as things unfold, definitely that. Uh, and also some of the other unique features, right, uh, which can be added onto DeFi dollar, not, not just being limited to a more diversified index, but also to a broader utility, right? I think uh, also getting very tightly integrated with DeFi, right? I think that is something that you will see in the short uh, to medium term, right? And uh, definitely more and more experiments in the longer term, not just the stable coin, but the index space as well. Yeah, uh, th thanks a lot for sharing your vision of where DeFi dollar will be in the future and uh, and taking the time to kind of answer all the questions on that, that I have for DeFi dollar. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks, Bobby. And I would like to thank you as well. Right? I think a disclaimer, obviously, right, that uh, you guys are investors, but would uh, highly encourage other people, right, to reach out uh, to you folks. You've been brilliant in your support uh, and have helped us at every step of the way, right? Uh, let it be any small query that I sent you. <laughs> any point in time, right? You've been really quick in responding and helping us out. So a big thanks for that and would highly encourage people to reach out, right? And work with the CoinGecko team. Couldn't recommend better partners to work with, for sure. Cool, man. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me again, Bobby. Uh, looking forward to coming back again mm -hmm. sometime and sharing more with the community. And yeah, uh, let's 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 uh, keep, this, keep this good work going. For sure. All right.